Um, just a couple of very quick things. I'm going to be very quick because we have, I know Laura has a lot to get to. I want to first mention the uh, scholarships, thanks to the generosity of you all, the participants in the Training for Teaching program who donated to the scholarship fund, Tooney Page, whose donation matched, Tooney Page and Still Point Farm, who, who has um, sponsored this entire program. Teresa Davidson, who made an extra donation, and Jen Verharn, who has donated um, a session uh, program to one of you. Uh, we've been able to award almost $15,000 in scholarships funds, and we've split it amongst 13 participants. Not everyone will receive the full amount requested, but hopefully each of you that have received a scholarship, it's enough to make the various programs work. Um, so our various recipients are using their funds for all educational purposes in preparation for instructor certification exams, to prepare for the USEFS judges program, to improve technical coaching skills and paradressage, to improve their groundwork skills, to formulate a vision impaired paradressage coaching pilot program, to work on improving the training of their school masters in order to better pass on the learning to their students, to host teaching clinics to help participants improve their teaching skills amongst some others. So uh, also, oh, also I wanna thank Allie Brock, Teresa Davidson, Fern Feldman, and Tooney Page for su serving on the selection committee for the scholarships. So I'm just gonna read the names of those who've received scholarships. I wish we could have given to everybody, but um, we've done the best we can. So the scholarship recipients will be Alyssa Timberlake, Anna O'Brien, Bonnie Stetson, Colleen O'Day, Elsie Reedford, Hannah Irons, Jennifer Baer, Jessica Foshi, I hope I pronounced that correctly, Joy Banyuk, Laura Ashley Killian, yeah. Chris Rowe, Megan Laffin, and Shelby Blades. Again, yeah. You're not necessarily getting all the funds that you requested, but I think it's it's enough to make it work. So without, take, congratulations to all of you. I got the scholarship. <laughs> yeah. Okay, has everybody muted? Laura's excited. Muted, let's all make sure you're muted. Um, so with no further ado, I give you Laura King. Hi everybody. Here tonight, I picked a subject for everybody that I thought would help with your training and helping others because sometimes we get caught up in our own lives, we forget that sometimes our emotions are really important. So, tonight's title is a, You're Getting Your Personal Best, but it's about your emotional intelligence for yourself and for your students. I'm a hypnotherapist and I use hypnosis as one of my tools along with NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, but I also like to educate people about how our brains function. I've been practicing now for 20 years and I have ended up in the equestrian world quite extensively because that's something I enjoy, number one. Number two, I wrote a book called The Power to Win that is about performance, releasing performance, anxiety, concentration, peak performance. So what I'm doing tonight is really going to go through a process about your emotional intelligence. And sometimes, you know, we get catch words in different times. It seems to be the catch word in a lot of businesses today and just kind of learning about how we are as emotional human beings. So can we click the next slide, please? And we'll go into what is emotional intelligence? Oops, we wanna, sorry. Oh, that's okay. What is emotional intelligence? If you think about the definition of it, it's the capability to understand our feelings and it motivates others managing emotions and how it affects relationships. Because when we think about how we respond to something, the natural laws of the mind are, you are what you think, a thought creates a physical reaction, your imagination is stronger than knowledge. If you're caught up in an emotion, you're responding <clears throat> to something other than being able to manage yourself. So as we go to the next part of how we see, emotional intelligence can set us up ap apart from other people. IQ, if you look at the bottom of the slide, IQ is a threshold of requirements. We, you're born with an IQ. It stays the same your whole life. That never really changes. It tests the same. 
But when we move into the emotional intelligence part, it's a technical functional skill. You become skilled in emotions. Do you know how you respond emotionally is learned behavior? 99% of the time, you're learning it from your parents, your teachers, your, your trainers. You're learning how to manage emotions, how people around you from birth until about nine is when it first gets categorized and you start having how you react to things. So what we know about star quality of human, what I mean by star quality, your personal best, is when you learn using your intelligence and getting your technical functional skills to how you function responding to circumstances around you. Next slide, please. So when we know how that works, one of the main things we want to react to or know how we react to is why we react. So if you have anger, when you have exhaustion, you get a reaction. During that time, if you have pain, you get an overreaction. And then if you're exhausted and in pain, you, you go into inaction. So it depends on where you are in your state, let's say if you're teaching or if you're writing or if you're showing, if you have any one of those three things, you're going to have some sort of reaction or overreaction or be in action. So what we learn and why is it important for emotional intelligence is if we can learn how to be more emotionally balanced all the time and not react to kind of be neutral to things, to be, to be, be able to manage manage ourselves, not to have that internal dialogue of that little gremlin in there going in and in and in something negative. We want to keep the balance inside of ourselves. I'm going to teach you a lot of things how to do that. Click please. Emotions are data. You know, you're all on Zoom now when I teach this. Hands up if you felt this way recently. Anxious, frustrated, annoyed, irritated, angry. Lonely. Lonely has been a big one during COVID this last year for me dealing with people. Disillusioned, tired, sad. Sad's been one. Nobody's been able to travel and do things and see family at different times. Hands down if those feelings resulted in poor communication, wasted time, stress. Oh, that's the my favorite word, stress. Poor teamwork, headaches, sleeplessness, muscle tension, physical problems. So we know that this data, we have information to cause certain reactions. Click. So if you can take how the brain functions, anybody that's met me before, anybody's heard me speak or knows me, I just love to teach people about the brain. All of us are just computers. We just function off what's in our brain. So technically, Everything is neutral that you see, smell, hear, taste, or feel until it goes into your brain, your core operating system. It gives you your values, your beliefs. Where do your values and beliefs come from? Your parents, what you've learned, your language, whether you speak one or more languages, because you get different responses by different interpretations and different language processing. Memories. We all have memories. Can you remember the first horse or pony that you had? I remember mine, his name was Dinky. It was a, po a cow pony. I taught more people in Pahokee, Florida how to ride a horse on Dinky. So I was giving riding lessons at 12. I'm not sure I was very qualified, but it was just a couple kids, <laughs> but it was fun. So we know our memories. How do we make decisions? How do you make a decision? Where does that come from? It's part of the brain that has a program in there. And then you have your time coding. Now time coding to me is very interesting because it kind of gives you what should I be doing at this time in my life? What is programmed in there? Well, I'm 65. What's programmed in my brain is that I shouldn't be working. I should be retiring. Well, that's the last thing I'm gonna do. So my brain gave me conflict about that. So I had to reprogram my subconscious mind to get rid of the anxiety. That was, Remember, we saw her at the thing. Was completely aware of that. 
So when we have time coding and then showing, people sometimes have thought processing, they wish they had done this then, this then, and they weren't doing this now, or they started writing later, so they, they're behind. You know, they have a lot of time coding judgment. Yeah. Then we have meta programs. Meta programs are ones that where people function and the they, dressage for the London they grade go one. over different information. Well, let me interrupt. Someone needs to mute themselves. They're not paying attention to me. We need to, whoever um, has their speaker, the microphone on needs to mute so everybody can hear. Thank, okay, you. thank you. Thank you. So that goes when you see, hear, smell something, you goes into your brain, you get an internal representation, a state, a physical reaction that gives you your behavior. That happens in a nanosecond of time. When we know that we have negative behaviors and we have negative energy or things in our brain, it impacts our relationships, our ability to learn. It impacts everything about us. Have you ever seen a student's in a bad mood? Are they going to learn the most from you? When you're teaching in a bad mood, are you good at articulating and speaking and getting your point across? So it's this is all about finding that balance. Click. Thank you. The way I like to teach is that the brain, think of your brain like a tree trunk. There's a ring of every year of your life. So if birth is in the middle, so what we think about in the outer line there, the brown, that's where we are now. And our time coding is all the negative emotions and limiting decisions and limiting beliefs come from the inside of our reactions. Then our future time coding is how we decide we want things in the future. So our core operating system can be changed. We can actually put better programming in there, learn how to be our personal best by creating the autoresponder to manage life, to manage it not let life manage us. Click. When we think of emotional intelligence physically, it's, there's an understanding, the brain. When we have the brain, when we assign a meaning to something, it goes into the cortex, the limbic ring, and you, we have senses and we feel it first, then we get a stimulus. Then the brain stem sends that down through our whole body that nano knee jerk reaction, that fear, flight, fright, freeze mechanism is always on alert for self-preservation. So what we're gonna learn here is how we can have better programming in the emotional part, the emotional IQ to stay more balanced. Click. In the real world, what are some of the unspoken norms or expectations around emotions in your barn, in your ring? Is there tension? Is there anxiety? How are these emotions dealt with in the barn or at the show or when you were growing up? Sometimes people have grown up with tension at home and then they take it to the barn or tension from work and they bring it to the barn or tension in the barn. You gotta think about where it's all fed from and where it is now. What we're gonna break down is the different levels of that process. Why do people quit writing? They quit writing, be relate, poor relationship with a trainer or can't have a horse. There are lots of reasons. Or they switch. It's because sometimes it's just lack of communication across the board. Click. What we know, here's a, this is the benchmark model. And this is what we're just gonna go into each one of these cubes and I'm gonna give you information. Your personal competence, what you see is your self-awareness. Being self-aware is your ability to know your own emotions, what your words say, how you communicate. What I do, the self-management of how I communicate my emotions. Then if I have the social competence, that's a social awareness that I'm managing that in what I portray. Then that goes into the relationship management. How do I manage my processing? How do I manage my communication, talking and being around people? How, did, how am I perceived? When we build our emotional IQ, it builds a strength mechanism of how to be in control of your emotions. 
self-awareness. Do you know, we're all kind of look in the mirror every day and I'm sure we all woke up this morning and looked in the mirror and says, hi, honey, you look great. Are you happy today? We really, really should think about this. I was told the other day that, you, did you know that a smile, whether real or fake, still produces endorphins? So this, I was watching this self-help program and the person says, well, just look in the mirror and go, and I go, that's kind of weird. But I started saying it to some of my clients and making them do it every morning. They said it made me smile because I thought it was so silly I was doing it. So your self-awareness of the ability to recognize self-emotions and then your students. We want to be happy with how it's happening and understanding the general tendencies is do you have certain people come and they're usually in a bad mood or you know, they've been in difficult situations or difficult people that are around the barn. I'm sure when you go show everybody's happy and thrilled and can't wait to get in the ring. But then the idea is to be the person to be the calmer because then you're mirror matching then they can mirror match you. The I can, it's the identity of the emotion. So you think about if I can be emotionally intelligent, I'm gonna help my students be that. Mirror matching is a part of the NLP techniques that I have read about, learned a lot about. People mirror match a lot of things. So the more you are of that attitude or that positive mindset, that's what your students are gonna be. Click. When we think about emotions, it's data. All it is is data. You know, the body, the mind, and your relationships. The psychology of this is just basically knowing what the mind is doing. The physical part is the part that we know that we present. Can you tell when someone walks up and they're walking along? Or can you tell when someone walks up and they're ready for the day, can't wait to ride my horse? Y'all are lucky. In the horse world, we are very blessed to have our horses. That does bring out a lot of energy. But if the person's having anxiety before they get on the horse, the horse mirrors the student, the person. So this feeds everything. This is, this is like the ongoing story of the process. When we think about our vocabulary, Words, 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 words. We think about, I gave you a list of them for y'all to read, you know, optimism, resilience, what, how you think, are you, even the word crazy. I don't even know if I put that one on here, but that's what I'm going to talk about. You know, people say, oh, that drives me crazy. I go, you don't want to use that. Because if you look up the definition of crazy, that's a nervous reaction to be tentative and nervous. Crazy isn't calm, cool, and collected. So words thinking about how you present them, how you communicate them. Are they positive? Are they fear-based? Are they negative? This isn't just about positive thinking. This is about communicating in a normal status of words that aren't demeaning, that aren't hurtful, that aren't doing something. Another one that I hear a lot around, I, I have several people staying with me during COVID and her favorite word is sorry. And I have to ask her, you know, I just don't like hearing the word sorry. If you have a habit of saying sorry, they've done this research that you have a low self-esteem. You have a low self-image if you're saying sorry about everything. If you're saying you want to apologize for something, that's different, but sorry is no good worthless definition. Sometimes clicks in people's brain and lowers their energy. It's just so much science behind this. So just think of words, click. When we have a level of thinking and we know the situations that we're dealing with, sometimes there's a quote from Edison that I just put in here for y'all to have. We gotta change our thinking. This has been going, we've been talking about this for years, click. Self-management, using the self-management, we're gonna really Think about this a moment. It's choosing how we want to be perceived. I use a lot of self-management because I am giving sessions all the time. If someone called me up and start our session and I'm in a bad mood and I'm not managing myself, would you want your next session with me? 
I wouldn't call, actually, I know several people that are friends of mine that are hypnotherapists that I went to. And I know several times they weren't very in good moods and happy. And I'm thinking they're going to hypnotize me. No, I want somebody that's going to be motivated to do what they're doing and happy with their jobs. That's important, I think, for y'all. So your self-management is important. As you portray that, you're going to teach that to your students. Click. Can I? The management of emotions and behavior is what you're going to do. It's that communication. Click. I put all these slides in here, not just to sit here and read them to you, but so you have them later. So I'm going to go through a couple of them pretty fast just because they're there for your, you can download the PowerPoint and use this. You can I will share it with your students, do whatever you want to, because I, the more you get out, the more you learn, the better we're all going to be. So becoming aware of your words, slow down and breathe and think. What did I say? What do I need to say? If you're saying something, you need to portray something negative or correct somebody, really attempt to say it in a positive. They've proven that reverse psychology really doesn't work and really hurts people's emotions, their way of living, their way of thinking. Click. There's a quick strategy that I'd like to teach everybody. Take a six second pause. Six seconds is nothing. Just six second pause. Train yourself just to take a moment. Take that moment before you respond. Click. As we do so, we move into the social awareness recognizing and understanding the emotions and moods of individuals, entire groups of people. When you go in different places, today's world is so different for all of us too, wearing masks. I was teaching the, the group yesterday and I was smiling. I took my mask off, I was far enough away and they let me speak without my mask on, which I was very thankful for. And I was smiling, but if you look, you can see them smiling with their eyes. If you're really smiling, you are going to smile in different ways, but you're going to share that internal energy that you have by balance, by being that you. Click. So we go through this development. You are actually going to have this ability to be emotionally balanced and have the behavior, what, which creates your personal best. I started teaching a few years ago, um, a lot of different places about personal best. I did a lot of research about it. And what I find, I'm gonna talk to you about the student then I'm gonna talk to you about it as a trainer. Everything we do as a human, when we go do it, we really are that nanosecond of time doing our personal best. As we think about what that means in the brain is the production of the neurological pathways of whatever skill, ability, whatever is in there about how to do what you're doing. No one intentionally attempts to do it incorrectly or wrong or make a mistake. But what we do is we build that unconscious mind, subconscious mind, auto responder to uh, allow that personal best to be how we do the skill. It's like driving a car. Do you think about how your brain has produced what to do to drive the car between passing a semi, weaving in a traffic, be on the interstate, getting on and off, and then parking it? Do you get out and measure your space before you park your car to make sure you'll fit? No, you trust your brain. And your brain has calculated all of that. So what I like to teach and help people do is take their skill of riding a horse, doing a dressage test, doing every movement correctly, and then being able to trust their personal best each movement. What that does, it takes away the little gremlin in there that's going, man, well, remember last time you missed that tempi change? You remember the last time you, nah, nah, nah. then you can get control of that and you get the emotional behavior of wait, wait a minute. As we do this, we're gonna be at that personal best because that's what we're gonna produce in that nanosecond. When I taught this to a trainer, this was a couple years ago, and he's like, wow, Laura, 
that really makes sense. He came back the next week for the next session. He says, you know, I saw my students differently this week. If I took on the mindset that they were really doing their personal best, even though it wasn't correct, I wasn't as hard on them. And then they did it better the next time. Don't we do better if we feel like that we're being appreciated for what we've done so far correctly? If I'm going to get reprimanded, the reprimand getting, rep getting corrected negatively puts a connotation or a, a cloud on doing it again. It's kind of like, have anybody ever had a fender bender in the car? Then every time you drive your car, you wonder if that next car or, or stop at a red light, somebody going to rear end me if I've been rear ended. So you're, you're tentative more the problem. So your personal best, if we can develop the, the positive emotional managed mindset and being balanced, you'll be better at that personal best. Click. One of the things we think about is our mental health. I know y'all didn't sign up tonight for a mental health class. So I only have a couple of slides just because I think it's so important. A lot of life coaches use the pie of life. I use it a little differently than the, uh, most people, but I like to use it because I believe the more you can work on everything in your life, the smoother your will will roll. So let's say I use this mental health slide. This is someone that's not balanced mentally. So their family life needs some improvement. Their you know, fun and happiness needs a little attention. Their health needs some attention, purpose. You know, so the career, they maybe spend all their time on their career. It looks like my wheel looked like that a while ago. Not anymore. I really work on keeping it straight. What we want it to look like, which is really, is it doable? It's doable, but it's not always all the time. But Lisa's gives you a mindset that when you have your student, part of their wheel might be out of kilter. So it gives a little bit more ability to be more patient with them or have more kindness with them if their family life isn't going well or if they have some health issues or if their relationships aren't going well. Click. In a perfect world, do we live in a perfect world? Absolutely not. But this would be what your will look like. It would roll smoothly. So in my opinion, you as a trainer can help be there for that student a little bit and make at least their wheel of coming to you and what their other issues are be a little smoother because the more they enjoy their sport, they go home with a better attitude. And don't we do our sport because we love it? You know, people you know, come to me and I go, well, why do you ride if you're so scared and you're so afraid or you don't you why do you show if you have show anxiety so badly because i want to they say well if you want to let's fix it so to me just giving you these slides tonight is just opening the opportunity for you to think about your student's life you're not going to fix the whole thing but your attitude will help them across the board click Social awareness in all sports is a social part of it, cause moods and different things with people. You know, there's so much, I, like I spoke yesterday on this, is helping these kids get rid of jealousy and judgment of others. Be in your lane and do your own personal best all the time. You'll excel to be so much better, but recognizing and understanding the emotions you know, we, we want to educate them on doing what you need to teach them, what they're taking their lesson for. But if you take a moment and be this, not to be their psychologist, not to listen to all their problems, you know, you can hand them my number, there are lots of other people out there, but be there, be aware of it so that at least there's that added bonus that, that gives you your fluidity with them. Click. I can again, activating the emotions to the seat you can help change this and you can help the tendencies and the reactions. You're, you're a teacher, they're, you're their mentor. They're, they're usually 99.9% .9 of the time when I ask somebody for their role model, it's usually their trainer or, or someone they've trained with sometime in their life. Y'all are important people. 
And it's always the, that mindset to be aware of that and take it on not as a, as a bad thing, but as a positive thing. When someone tells me something I've helped them with or texts me after they won and got their personal best or I read Facebook, you know, it's not about me. I'm a facilitator sharing what I've learned and what I use in my life. This is a testimonial here. Not that I care whether you know about my life, but I want you to understand y'all have that in your lives. And the can I is yes, I can. Click. When we think of the social awareness strategies and on the surface, the behavior, clothing, attitude, gender, age, religion, job title, everything has some sort of awareness of how we function and how we're looked at and perceived. Um, in different people talk about different things and work on different subject matters to teach everybody. What I want this to be is kind of pulling it all together and saying, hey, this is a way to put this internal dialogue that everything is important that we are looking at being part of. You're part of an industry that has lots of opportunity. We were saying earlier, aren't we lucky in the horse world? We're all still have a business. A lot of places in other countries are still closed down, different things. So it's taking all the awareness of what we're part of, click. And aware of the whole picture, get a glimpse at it. Take a second pause and be interested in how to react in all these social awareness informations. Because as you teach your students the same thing, you're actually helping yourself find your balance. And different cultures have different actions and words and definitions. I remember one student, one client I had, he's a kid, he spoke German, but his main language was English. And his German trainer, the voice was harsh still, and he thought he was mad all the time. It, so it wasn't that he had to change it, but it was awareness of it. And as soon as I gave him the awareness that that's just his tone of voice, it wasn't that he was angry. So it's learning the social awareness strategies. The next slide's a good one, click. It, you know, in different countries mean different things. This one I thought was funny. The okay sign means something different in Japan. It means money. I didn't know that until I put this point PowerPoint together. Okay in the UK, the USA, zero in Russia, insult in Brazil. Who a thunk? I didn't know that. But anyway, I learned something new every day. So I thought that was a good representation. I do remember, I, I'm not going to, I was speaking in England one time and I said a word and the whole audience just, looked at me and I said something that wasn't appropriate, but it was a normal word here. We got to learn these things. Click. As we go through this, it is that awareness of watching behavior. With horses riding and students, and you can tell by their behavior how they're feeling, their students. To me, I love this story. I'm heavily trained in NLP, I did all this stuff 20 years ago. I wrote my first book and my husband proofed it. He says, my goodness, you've been doing this to me for years. And I said, well, yeah. So now he laughingly tells everybody, he does the laundry, grocery shopping and cooking. He doesn't, but he loves to say that because I hypnotize him to do it all. But my other favorite thing to do is when we go places, if someone's in a bad mood, a waitress, someone walking into the restaurant, a grocery store clerk, wherever we go, if they're in a bad mood, I always do some NLP on them. I mirror match them and then I they compliment them and I say something nice and then they're just so nice for the rest of the dinner. So I don't know, 15 years ago, we're going to a restaurant, we had the moodiest waitress and my husband said, this one's mine. And I go, okay. So he started doing what I do. By the end of the night, she hugged and kissed him goodbye. <laughs> so, you know, it's using some of these tools. And I offer a lot of this that you see that I teach and I've done a lot of different things with NLP. But when we become aware of this, you're going to change a lot too. Click. When we know relationship management, 
The self-awareness and the self-management is your social awareness. And as you do this, I just gave you an example that was some NLP techniques, mirror matching, and then being a good mood and complimenting. It changes a person's attitude in a nanosecond. I remember one time I was with a friend and I we met this person in line doing something and she was in a really bad mood. I think she had cussed out the person in front of her or something. And she turned to me and, oh, you have a beautiful necklace on. And my, she, oh, thank you. And turned back around my girlfriend said, you really liked her necklace? I go, what necklace? <laughs> it was okay. I wasn't lying. It was pretty. She must have wore it because she liked it. Think about that. Click. Back to the can I. Yes, I can. So changing and managing the interactions, creating that positive outcome. These are great examples to see what you can do, you know, with the student in the barn with help, with a groom, with anybody that's helping. Like when we have that relationship management, the whole learning the anatomy of the working relationship, your needs, their needs, and what are the needs of what you need to accomplish? I couldn't find a good horse picture, so I just put two people talking. <laughs> so it's a communication. How can we communicate better? Click. The whole picture allows you to have this understanding and this ability to manage, but the feedback, when you communicate with somebody that gives you feedback, you know, the smile when I complimented her necklace. It was so nice to have that interaction. Click. This is about your ability to do what you need to do, goal setting. What is your personal best? Yes, I'm always teaching people how to be their personal best in the ring. Also in businesses for running their business, for being a boss, for being a trainer. I want you to think about what it is to be that in your field, where you are, what level, what, what age, you know, adult amateurs, children, because I can guarantee you that the average person's self-image is low. And I think a lot of times kids love to ride because they interact with their horses and not other people. And that becomes their lives, which is great. That was my life too. So when we're putting this together, we want to know what your goal setting is. Click. And we also want to know what's real versus personal. What does that mean? The disconnect, the real self, the personal best. When we think about performance, we know that what makes you perform, you have dreams, you have goals, you have value, all these things that put together what it is you're doing it for. We all create where we're going with it. What is the outcome you want to achieve? We all do it and I don't care what field anybody's in. We, we wanna do something like to be a trainer, to be a writer, to go to the Olympics or whatever, whatever it is. I love the it. We have to see what you can do to disconnect. What is the disconnection from the motivation? Where's the learning of the agenda to how to do it? Take lessons, practice. You know, the, the new pathway to get there, the personal mastery, the skill, advancing that. You know, one of my favorite sentences these days is when I hit my toe, you do the right thing at the right time all the time. Can you, it, it's helped you do the right thing at the right time all the time. Creating that personal mastery, that level. What you're doing, teaching them is helping that internal dialogue create it to be what? All of this is about an autoresponder of the automatic doing. When you ride and you are in your peak level doing your personal best, you're actually in a hypnotic state that zone between alpha and theta level. You ever know what the zone feels like? Yes, you do when you're really into the moment of doing. 
to me, this slide really gives us the, the real self, the point that you, where you judge it, the self-assessment, the 360 feedback, the an analysis, then we want to move it and trust it and allow it to be what we do automatically. Automatically to do this. When we know that, we're going to create the focus and the strengths to focus. What how do we how do we train somebody to focus? It's recognizing the expression of the feelings. It's giving yourself the, the time to focus. Can you tell someone when goes in la la land when you're giving them a lesson? Yeah. How do you train focus? Well, one of the things I love to teach trainers when they sit in my chair is keep telling them how focused they are. Just use the word. Use it. Well, you were focused when you did that tempe change. Guess what? The next time they do the tempe change, you're going to be more focused. Building in your words, recognizing, expressing feelings with them, make them feel good when they made a correction or whatever. You have that, you don't have to be in your own emotion. They have their emotions, but shifting them a little bit. Click. When we focus, the emotional intelligence is unique. It creates a way that we are part of it. And when we incorporate the IQ and incorporate our style, our skill and what we're doing, that gives the internal value system of managing everything. One of the things I really, you know, a lot of people have heard me speak and know why I'm a hypnotherapist. Hypnosis saved my life 45 years ago from depression, suicide. I'm a product of hypnosis. I've used it for a lot of things over the last 45 years. Through marriages, difficulties, life events. You know, sometimes I say he gave me lots of things and a lot of life lessons so I could help more people. I've worked in the medical world, have a, a client that is passing a cancer now and she is in hospice and she made her husband call me the day and she just wanted to say thank you because I've helped her so much through working in the Cancer Institute. She had a fear of needles and she had a fear of um, the port being put on. So she actually came in and was one of my, helped me with some students I was training and she would helped us through. We made the tape like silly putty and she says, I'm lying here in hospice and it's, it's like silly putty every time and I remember you. Now that's why I do what I do to help people find better ways to manage everything. So when we think about the emotional intelligent part, it is creating that way to manage whatever you need to manage in life. This is good for everything. Click. No matter what the self image is, you can begin to change it today. Your self-image is important, everybody. Because when we look at that wheel and we think about our own lives, it's funny when we pulled it up and I sat here staring at it to talk to y'all about it. My life, my wheel is usually really smooth. I work diligently on that. I have a couple of friends of mine that hypnotize me. If I have a hiccup in life, I don't call things problems their hiccups because I can find a solution. I teach the word solution to everybody. If you think of the word solution, your brain will produce a solution, not a problem. It will just keep producing solutions. So for those of you that don't know this, I live in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. I've been here 30 something years. I live on three acres of the barn. I don't have any horses here now. And I have a house in North Carolina that officially became a snowbird last year during COVID. And I would see my cameras, I would rent my barn out in the summer and I would see they'd forget to close gates. And then one day I'm seeing the horses out by the pool and I'm going, this is a little too stressful. I don't really need all this anymore. So we decided to put on the market. We were talked out of it to put on the market for COVID. You know, everybody know the real estate market now? Everything's selling. So I finally talked my husband into it. My son got his real estate license, so he's going to help sell it. And so we put the price on. And my son says, I think the price is too high, mom. You better lower it. Don't worry about it. If it's meant to sell, it'll sell. It's going to sell in a couple of weeks anyway. One week later, 
guy comes walking through with an iPad, the buyer's in Hawaii, showing the property on the iPad to the person in Hawaii, and they bought the house. I went, oh, that's wonderful. My husband says, we're homeless now. Where are we going to go? Because he's still working down here and needs to have a house, place to live. I went, oh, I didn't think of that. My wheel was really not rolling. <laughs> so two days later, I went to Port St. Lucie and found a home. So I was trying to figure out how to do anything. Everything I did was about solutions. I just kept manifesting solutions. So I want you to think of yourself for a moment and just do a little, think of your wheel. What in your life just isn't quite where it needs to be? Don't judge it. Don't put a bunch of thought into it. Just say, oh, I need a solution for that area of my life. And then sometimes sit down and write solutions for that area of my life. Just practice that sometimes. As you notice the processing, then you're going to find a way that's going to help you and solutions start coming to you. For me, my solutions are sometimes at 2 a.m. in the morning and I lie in bed. I have to hit play on the CD, MP, I still have a CD player next to my bed, CD player and go back to sleep with hypnosis because I use hypnosis for sleep. So use this information. Then the next morning I get in the shower and all of a sudden a real solution comes and I'm going, oh, that's it. And I come out, my husband said, what did you figure out this time? Use these words. The brain, when you ask it for a solution, it has an autoresponder. I learned this years ago in India in a training I went to. I came home and my first day back to going to my office, this van, I'm passing this van and solutions is on the side of the van. The marketing company has learned this word. Solutions to your rat problem. That was about five years ago. A couple months ago, I had a rat problem. I remember that van and I called that company. I looked up solutions for your rat problem in the yellow, not yellow pages on, I actually asked my phone for it. She gave it to me. Um, so when we think about this, this is what I'm teaching you, but I really want you to go into doing it for yourself. My purpose here is to help you across the board. So my next slide, you didn't sign up for a nutrition class and anybody that's heard me has heard this and I do kind of push this a lot. I push this so much that sometimes I'm annoying, but I've proven this and I've been to all the right doctors and studies, and I don't care if you use premierprotein.com, but if you go there, there's a calculator. You need protein to function. As a trainer, I really want you to learn this because I learned it because I sat in my chair helping you as trainers, helping your students be better students and you to be better trainers. And when I saw hiccups happening, I took it personal and I researched it. And I studied with a doctor from University of Nevada. She does the nutrition for all the um, athletes in Las Vegas, like for all the Circus Olays and all that. And she proved to me, because their brains need to function to do all their movements and everything, that the brain needs that. And it dawned on me when I was talking to her that I needed it. I, my brain needs to work. If somebody has a nine o'clock appointment with me, I want my six o'clock appointment that night to get 150% of me. So I did the calculations. I found this is an easy tool. I need 80 grams of protein to sit in that chair all day and be here for everybody. You need it. And I know all the questions want to be so thin and it's important. That's why I really teach about the shake because they always, well, I can't, I can't eat before I ride. I have solutions for that. If you drink a cup of coffee, use the protein shake as your creamer. You, anybody can make themselves drink something before they ride, especially before they show. I've been accused of being really rude. I've been 
told people not to call me back when they've texted me after a mess up at the show. I go, what'd you have for breakfast? They say a bagel and a cup of coffee. I don't call me again. This is so important. So I'm talking to you because I have the opportunity tonight to reach out and share this information because it's important for you in your life too. And if you're a trainer that shows, which hat are you wearing? If you're wearing the trainer hat, you need it to be a good trainer. If you're wearing the show hat, you need this too. You're wearing the barn manager hat, whichever hat you're wearing, you want to be that person doing the best you can be, being your personal best. It's important. You're important to the people you touch, to yourselves, to your families. This is important. Click. I gave you an extra slide with some suggestions. There's some homeopathic calming stuff I teach about. Collagen is good for the, the body and the bones and the muscles. And there's the pro, premier protein shake. Click. I only put that slide in so you could get a picture of it. Hypnosis. Most of y'all probably know what hypnosis is because you've heard me speak, but I've got to say it here and I did just a few slides on it. It's a state of unconsciousness where you can still hear. It's just like daydreaming. If you worry and you make that mountain out of a molehill, you're hypnotizing yourself, self-hypnosis, all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. I'm just a facilitator guiding you with what I've learned to help people with. So I say I'm a facilitator and I relax you and help you make molehills out of mountains. That's my job. Click. And we can access that subconscious mind. So you're gonna hear, you've heard all about mindfulness out there, guided imagery, visualization, all of it is there. It's all the same thing. Click. Just giving you this slide so you get a visual of, this is what it looks like to me, the computer. Conscious mind is the monitor, subconscious mind is the hard drive. It's like an iceberg. Click. Right now, I've told you these, I just put them here so you'd have a slide. You are what you think was what you get. Every thought has a physical reaction and your imagination stronger than knowledge. Click. What is NLP? This slide is just for you to realize something important. Neuro-linguistic programming is the neurological pathway in your brain of the words you say. You're programming to the words. What does that word mean is that's what it is. That's what we have to realize and that's what we have to be aware of. Remember that, click. The one word that I really, 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 really want to get across to y'all. When you're thinking something negative, Use an actionary word to cancel it, erase it, or delete it. If, if the word don't is in your vocabulary, right now, don't think about the black horse. What are you thinking about? A black horse. So if you're telling your students don't do something and they do it, you just need to learn all they hear is do it. So if you have that in your vocabulary, sit down and write all the things you say don't do and memorize how to say it the way you want it. I promise you on my life, everybody would do better. All your students will ride better for you. Click. What we realize and what I'm saying here is making mental health a line item in your budget. There are a lot of people out there that practice what I do. It's not just about me, but you take good care of your horses. You, you, they get everything for them. Remember to take care of yourself. Click. As we think about the process, I gave you a breathing technique in here. Just use it. Click. We're not going to do it now. You can just read it and use it. Maintain a positive view. Keep that mindset up. Click. I'll give you ways to do that. Be proactive, not reactive when you're faced with difficulty. When we go through life, the process of what we need to go through click, is being aware that you need to go easy on yourself. Now, I have some people I use this PowerPoint for, they cut these out and they put little notes around themselves. They take index cards and they remind themselves of certain things. Click. 
This is an exercise I put in here just for you to have. Click, blow away your emotion, change your response. These are all, to, these are all in here for you. Click. Stop negative personalization. Avoid personalizing any behaviors. Like the judge ranked you low. She doesn't like your horse. Forget that. Because if you have that attitude, the next time you ride in front of that judge, you ride the horse, the judge didn't like it anyway, your personal best will not come through. Teach that to your students. Now, what I'm offering here, and what I'm telling every one of you, I have classes I sell online. I'm getting ready to produce a lot more. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm here to give you something. There's my email address. Email me and I'll send you the personal best MP3. And I have several in trainer MP3s. I have a diplomatic trainer. I have a couple other ones. And I'm working on this other one I'm doing now. Email me at that email address. And I would love, and I'm not getting it to get your email address to send you anything else. I am just want to gift you. Y'all came on tonight to hear what I had to say. And I appreciate that. This is my opportunity to help more people. And I'm lucky, Lyndon invites me and lets me be part of this. And I am so happy to volunteer my time. And so, so with that, I wanna gift you whatever I can help you with. If you have a question, we're gonna see if we have any questions. I don't have that on my slide here, but we'll look and see. But there, I'm gonna give you that opportunity, click. And if you do want to have a session, my daughter, Larissa Brazier, is part of my team, Billy Jean Foster, and myself. We do Skype and we do sessions on Zoom too. And so we're available to help you with whatever. Our job is to help your work life be balanced. And that's my goal for you guys. And I love helping you. So are there any questions? I didn't see the, the chat. Oh, we do have some chats. Any questions? Wait. I don't see any questions, Laura. I think you've got our brains going 100 miles an hour. We don't have a time to <laughs> write, a, write a question. If anybody wants to put in a question now, um, certainly appreciate. Um, I wanted to get the whole thing in there, Lyndon, so I didn't. You did beautifully, Laura. <laughs> exactly. I had it out. 757, you did it. <laughs> um, no, that's been fantastic. And I think you've given us all a great deal. I, I know for myself, even though I've listened to you talk a good deal, a great deal to think about and uh, what we're doing with our lives as well as with our business. So I thank you very, very much. Uh, those of you watching, we will uh, be posting uh, this on our YouTube channel. Mary sends out to all of you uh, the link to that and um, uh, we'll include the, the uh, contact with Laura as well in that email. So you'll get that tomorrow. It always takes a while for this to, uh, for us to get the, the video in order to post it. Will they get the date, be able to download the PowerPoint? And we, uh, we will also give you, give you uh, that information. Oh, good. Thank you. So Laura, you're getting some quite a few thank yous here. Oh, wait, I think there is a question. Um, I have a student that cries before she gets on. Her parents push her to ride, but then she loves it after a while. How do I make her happy to start? I would get her. This is a, I wanted to tell you all about this. Thank you for the question. Sometimes if you have somebody in a situation, talk to them just saying, don't go into why they're crying. They say, what's going to happen 15 minutes from now? Can we imagine what 15 minutes from now is going to be? and go over, oh, you'll be in the saddle, you'll be riding, you'll be, you're gonna have so much fun on your horse or your pony and get her to think, what, what's gonna happen 15 minutes from now? What this is called is future time coding. Kind of was talking about time coding to y'all before. It's what we do, we visualize to do, see us in the ring, but in an anxiety situation with crying as, as type of anxiety, you can be in an anxiety moment and you can, change the brain by saying in 15 minutes, her brain will start thinking in 15 minutes, what will I be doing? And it'll totally change your demeanor. It, it's, it's phenomenal. There's another quick one. I taught the kids yesterday. It's called bilateral stimulation. 
It's where you get them to toss something from one hand to the other. And in that time, the brain is going from one left side to the right side, right side to left side. It's going back and forth. It's called bilateral stimulation. Now, I teach this a lot to my equestrians when they're in the saddle, because then they can just do it by relaxing the right hand, relaxing the right shoulder, relaxing their left shoulder, relaxing their left hand. And they can do that in the saddle. And their whole demeanor will change about the third time they do it. You can't, I can't say who my clients are, but so many people out there do that. It's amazing. And even this one, before they're getting ready, they'll, whatever they have in their hand, they'll do this. Just tossing one, one hand to the other. So for the kid with this crying, if you say, in 15 minutes, what are you going to be doing? She'll change and then start saying something to her like, oh, and you're driving out here. You can't wait to get in the saddle and move on. So then she's going to start changing her drive out there. You just planted a seed that her drive is going to be so excited about sitting in the saddle. That's all she's going to think about. Great question. We have another one that's come up. Uh, any tips to help a very self-critical rider recognize progress, especially if show scores don't always improve every, every show? I can guarantee you taking some of these slides and memorizing the ability to tell her she's doing her personal best and tell her that there's a solution to what she's doing and then get her to write down her hiccups and then take the test where are the hiccups and say, well, let's just work on not the whole test and let's get one more point here, and one more point here. Nobody realized when I started doing the personal best how the scores were gonna go up, not just by wanting a higher score. By just teaching the brain that personal best, like one last week, she says, it was amazing, Laura, I, got, I went five points more and all I wanted was one more. She got the, her for personal best again, another personal best, another personal best. What the brain is doing. So the more you can say that to the student and get her to tell you what the opposite of her mistake is and just say, well, next time your score is going to be your personal best. Keep using the words and I guarantee you it'll start improving. Okay, so now we have... Um... What about the person who is thinking about the fear they will have in 15 minutes once they get on their horse? Oh, I like that. <laughs> then if they're thinking about the fear, you need to start anchoring them that every time they sit in the saddle, they feel good. You can say that every time you sit in the saddle, you're going to feel great. Start just using all the tools. When I hypnotize somebody, I say every time you sit in the saddle, you always breathe. Isn't that brilliant? I mean, that's just something I learned. Had a client come in. She was a jumper rider. She um, came in one day after a session. I helped her with getting rid of tinnitus. I helped her with all the stuff. She comes in. She says, there's a word you use and I don't like it. I don't want you to use it. I don't use this word. And I don't like it. I go, okay, whatever you want. I'm here for you. She says, I don't like the word always. I said, that's okay. I won't hypnotize you that you always breathe in the sounds. Fine. Never mind. Never mind. Please use that word. Think of your words. Tell them that they always breathe with their sound. Tell them they're always enjoying it. Whatever the it is, whatever the critical self-criticism is, whatever it is, do that. Use it. So in 15 minutes, if she's going to have fear, then in 15 minutes, you guide her with that. Use some guided imagery. 15 minutes, you're going to be in a saddle, relaxed and having a blast. That makes sense? I think that's all of our questions. Thank you. So again, Laura, thank you so very, very much. And you. uh, you've Take received care. a lot of things. Can you see the chat, Laura? I do now, I finally okay. clicked on so it. So you can see the, yeah, your, yeah, the thank yous are coming in and the amazings and the thank great you, sessions. Thank you. I love what I do and I'm so happy to be that's part of y'all's industry. You've been very generous to D4K. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And anytime you need me, I'm here. Thank you. And thank you all for coming. You'll be getting an email from Mary. And congratulations to those of you who received a scholarship. I wish we could have give them to, given to everybody everything they wanted. But I think $15,000 did pretty pretty nicely for, for you all. I'm, I just I can't believe the generosity of 
you all as well as uh, Tooney and Teresa and um, Jen Verharen for, for helping out with that. So it's almost the end of March. Have a great April, have a great spring and Thank we'll you. see you all again at some point. Everybody go do your personal best. Thank you. We definitely will. Good night, all. Good night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Lennon. Great job. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.